Hello and welcome to A Deeper PTE. In this video, we're going to explore a topic known as parthenogenesis. The most simple way to describe parthenogenesis is in calling it virgin birth. The most scientific way to describe it is development of an unfertilized female sex cell without any male contribution. This topic has intrigued me from the first time I heard about it. What if it were possible, at some point in the past, for women to self-conceive? What if this is still possible today? I hadn't explored parthenogenesis for many years, but then this channel was created, so I thought, what better time to re-examine the topic? In this video, I'll take you through what parthenogenesis is, how it works, why it may have come to an end, and I'll close with some deeper thoughts on the matter. First, let's talk about what parthenogenesis is. Parthenogenesis, known as virgin birth, is a form of asexual reproduction where an unfertilized egg develops without the presence or assistance of sperm. This has been documented many times in the animal kingdom and as recently as 2014, where a python named Thelma gave birth to six healthy babies without having been near a male partner. There are other documented cases in the animal kingdom as well. Scientists have many theories regarding this, including sperm being a simple electrical charge that activates the egg, or sperm serving as some sort of chemical agent that triggers the fertilization process. If these things hold true, fertilization can theoretically occur without sperm present given the right chemical and electrical environment. Parthenogenesis in humans is similar but a little different. According to those who have knowledge of the old way of birth, parthenogenesis occurs when a woman is in a state of superior alkaline health, lives very close to the laws of nature, and enters a state of physio-spiritual bliss. In other words, a woman must be fully aligned in her natural state and completely healthy and happy in order to achieve parthenogenesis. In humans, it is theorized that the babies that result from parthenogenesis are always female and always uniquely gifted leaders, geniuses, visionaries, and healers. The one caveat to this theory is that human males are said to have arise from this method as well. Figures such as Jesus, Buddha, Plato, and Leonardo da Vinci. There are some evolutionary benefits to parthenogenesis. For example, in the absence of males, the human race could theoretically continue. And if what is said of the children of parthenogenesis is true, society would benefit greatly from the presence of enlightened minds resulting from parthenogenic birth. So what happened to stop this? This is a big question on my mind and one I don't really have an answer for. Based on my research, my best guess is it ended because the environment itself became too toxic. The food, water, air, and relationships between people became energetically too toxic for women to naturally bring about parthenogenic birth. Personally, I believe it's still possible, and I believe it's still happening today. When I first discovered this concept, there was a website called The Experience Project, where people shared stories about different things that had happened in their lives. I remember reading stories about parthenogenesis from women who would say things like, still to this day, I have no idea where this little girl came from. Either they were single at the time or with a man, but not engaged in sexual relations with that man and yet still fell pregnant. Modern society would never believe such a thing, of course. The woman must always be the wayward philanderer, falling pregnant by every man she meets. But what if the women who swear they never cheated or the women who swear they were with no one yet fell pregnant are actually telling the truth. What if there are more stories like these that women keep to themselves because they know no one will believe them? I'm not sure, but this topic brings up more questions for me than it answers. I think it's fascinating and I think it's true. Perhaps this is why women historically have been oppressed to ensure they never spontaneously reproduce. These are all the thoughts I have for now. As I make new discoveries, I will share them with you. I hope you found this information as intriguing as I do. For more resources and my sources, check the description box below. I can't wait to hear your thoughts on this. Take care and thank you for watching A Deeper PTE.